Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. You guys, stay with me. Shalawama. And in today's class, we're talking about the specific dates and timings surrounding Passover. Okay. We go through this every year. There's a little bit of confusion as to when certain events are supposed to take place, like particularly the communion festival. When exactly is it supposed to take place? Which night? Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we'll be covering in this video, looking in scripture from Genesis and Exodus, um, as well as John, Matthew and Mark to pull out verses to prove which night the communion or the Passover meal is supposed to take place. Yeah, I think I asked you that question this morning. Yeah, that's why I actually included you in this class. Um, I figure there's a lot of people with the same questions that you had, so you'll probably be able to help them out as we go, making sure that we understand how this Passover meal works. When is it supposed to actually take place? Right. Because it, it is extremely important. Mm -hmm. You remember the video we did not too long ago where we asked the question, how did our Messiah die for our sins? Right. Mm -hmm. And I asked those in the listening audience to pause the video and think about that for a second. How did a man being crucified on a cross 2000 years ago affect us and our sins today. In other words, how did his death uh, affect our sins? Right. How did he die for our sins? Like I said, the, the viewers can pause the video and think for that for a second, but turns out the answer is Passover. Mm -hmm. So it's extremely important for us to get this timing right. right. We don't want to miss this marriage supper, this very important event. Right. So, like I said, in this video, we're going to be looking at the biblical instructions for each of these days and what exactly we're supposed to be doing on the 13th, 14th and 15th day of the first month. Now, the first thing we want to do is come over to the book of Enoch, chapter 72, which is the book of the revolutions of the luminaries and talk about the timing of the day. You hear us mention this on our channel often, that the day starts at sunset. And I'm sure many in the listening audience are not sure why that's so important, why we have to keep bringing it up. Well, we're gonna find out in this video that it makes all the difference in the world as far as Passover is concerned. If we don't understand that the day begins at sunset, we can end up missing Passover altogether. Or even, you know, do it all wrong. Do it I all. think Passover is probably one of the, I don't know if you you would say so or not, but Passover is probably of the feast, the most important that you get it right and the timing. Yeah, and, and what it is we're supposed to be doing on that day is to, the, it's the first feast of the year. It's kind of like the initiation feast. Um, if you want to get the rest of them right, you're going to have to get on board in Passover, else the rest of the feast throughout the year will be meaningless to you. Mm -hmm. So I said, like, like I said, that's why this video is so important. And it's so important for us to get this right. So we're looking here in the book of Enoch in chapter 72. Down here in verse two, he's talking about the first law of the luminaries. OK, so these luminaries, of course, he's talking about the celestials and how the sacred calendar works. Matter of fact, would you go ahead and read this? Okay. This is the first law of the luminaries. So this is the first law of the luminaries, the first law of the celestials and how they're used in our calendar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see what the first law is. The sun and the light arrive at the gates of heaven, which are on the east and on the west of it at the western gates of heaven. So now this right here tells us that the day begins at sunset. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit convoluted and we have to read it really careful to understand what it's saying. But it clearly says that the sun and the light arrive at the western gates of heaven. Yeah. It's saying that the sun and this light will be found in both the east and the western gates. But it's saying that the first law is that the sun arrives at the western gates. That's the first thing that happens. Okay. Which means that it all begins at sunset. Okay, because the sun sets in the west. Because the first law is that the sun sets. And we see down here in verse 8, we're being told the same thing, just in a different way. Matter of fact, would you read verse 8? The sun sets in heaven and, returning by the north to proceed towards the east, is conducted so as to enter by that gate and illuminate the face of heaven. So understand the chronological order here. 
It says, first the sun sets. It's talking about the sun here. This orb replete with splendid and flaming fire sets first. That's the first thing it does. And then it returns by the north. Now I can tell by your puzzled look that that isn't making the most sense in the world. Right. But what it's saying is that the sun sets in the west, then travels back around through the north, which is where Russia is at as far as we're concerned. Mm -hmm. Before it comes around by the east, which is over there by China somewhere, mm -hmm. and arrives on our eastern gates. Okay. So again, it's saying that the first thing that happens is that the sun sets, then it goes around and rises. Right. That's extremely important, like we say, because it throws the timing off of the new moons, the Sabbath days, the feast days. You'll get every holiday and holy convocation wrong if you don't understand this point. Right. So we can't think just because we start our day at midnight or in the morning mm -hmm. that the sacred calendar is the same way. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, as a biblical reference, we could come to Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 19 for more proof on how the days actually change over at sunset. Matter of fact, if you would read that verse. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gates should be shut and charged that they should not be open till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants set I at the gates that there should be no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. So you see here where it's saying began to be dark before the Sabbath. Right. Because at dark, they would have entered the Sabbath day. Right. Mm -hmm. So as the day is ending, as the sun is going down, they're getting prepared to shut the gates right. in preparation for the Sabbath day. Yeah. Now, as important as that is, we can't spend too much time on it. So let's go to the next fact about the sacred calendar that we need to understand and that is that the months begin with the new moon okay we see here in the same chapter of enoch is talking about the first day of the year mm -hmm. the first day of the first month of the year is when the sun and the moon enter the fourth gate right in other words you have the representation of the sun moon and the stars all declaring that a new year has started Mm -hmm. Well, when it comes to the month, when the sun and the moon converge is when the new month starts. Right. Matter of fact, would you go ahead and read verse 11? And in the fourth gate through which the sun with the moon proceeds in the first part of it, there are 12 open windows from which issue out a flame when they are open in their proper periods. So we're saying that it takes the convergence of the moon and the sun in order for these 12 windows to be opened in their proper periods. Okay. Then we go to the next chapter, 73, which is all about the inferior luminary, which is called the moon. And it tells us again that the month begins with the sighting of the new moon there in verse five. Would you read that? At that time, it appears and becomes to you the beginning of the month. 30 days, it is with the sun and the gate from which the sun goes forth. So what this is saying is that on that time when we have the new moon and the moon finally reappears, the sliver of the moon is sighted and verified, we do we declare that a new month has started and that's when we start blowing the trumpets for the new month or the new month. Now for a biblical reference for this, we can come to 1 Samuel chapter 20 with David interacting with King Saul. Yeah, this is a night where David and Jonathan hashed up a plan um, because King Saul was trying to kill David. Yeah, and so what they were doing was getting ready for the new moon celebration. This would have been one of their major festivals. They all come in to sit with the king on the evening of the new moon. Mm -hmm. We see that in verse five. But when we come down to verse 27, we understand that that new moon day was the first day of the month because it goes on to start talking about the second day of the month, right. which is mm -hmm. the day after the moon. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we understand how the sacred calendar works as far as the days, the months and the year. Okay. We had the new moon sighting on March the 22nd. So that would have began the first day of the first month. Right. And because the days change over at sunset, the appearance of that new moon, which happens right after sunset, would have began the new month as well as the new day. 
As well as the new year, is that right? As well as the new year, absolutely right. So our calendars for the first month in the year 2023 looks like this. And to make sure this video stays interesting into the future, let me go ahead and show you what the calendar will look like for the second month in the year 2023. Note that instead of April 4th, we'll be talking about May 4th. And this is what it'll look like in the year 2024 in the first month, assuming that the new moon is verified on the 9th. And this is what the calendar will look like for the second month in the year 2024 if the new moon is verified on the 8th of May. And I will combine them like this and show them from time to time throughout the rest of the video so that you can compare them to your current year. This video is brought to you by the Celestial Clock Calendar, the official timepiece of the 144,000. Get your Celestial Clock Calendar at coachinafight.shop or follow the links in the description below. Many viewers have seen us put out this calendar and this is what prompted the questions is because they're looking here and they see where it says Passover on April the 5th, but then they see Passover communion on April the 4th. Right. And this is the case every year. Mm -hmm. There's always, this is not unique to the year 2023. The Passover communion is actually on one day, the evening before the actual Passover day. Right. And that's what we're going to prove in this video, because like we said, this is probably the most important day for all of Israel, mm -hmm. you know, and if they're celebrating it on the wrong day, well, it may not count. Right. Now, when we come and look in Leviticus chapter 23, looking at verse five is when we hear the statute about the Passover. If you would go ahead and read that from the common English Bible. Okay. The Lord's Passover is on the 14th day of the first month at twilight. Now, the reason why I chose this translation is because it says twilight. Mm -hmm. Many of the other translations say at even, which we're not used to that in our language. You know, we don't use that right. So to us, the evening can last several hours mm -hmm. from sunset until the next morning. Yeah, it can. But this translation, along with other ones like the CJB, makes it clear that it's talking about the period of time between sundown and it's completely dark. Right. What is that called? That is called twilight. And then when we come to the book of Jubilees in chapter 49, which is an entire chapter about Passover. Mm -hmm. You see here that is telling us exactly when this event has to take place. Right. Matter of fact, would you read verse one? Remember the commandment which the Lord commanded thee concerning the Passover, that thou shouldest celebrate it in this season on the 14th day of the first month, that thou should kill it before it is evening, and they should eat it by night on the evening of the 15th from the time of the setting of the sun. So let's look at this real careful here. It's saying that they are to celebrate it on the 14th day of the month at evening. Mm -hmm. which we've already established this evening is twilight right. and is actually the beginning of the day. So when we're looking here at our calendar, understand that the day changes over at sunset. We wake up on the fourth on the 13th day of the month. Mm -hmm. But when we go to sleep on the fourth, it would actually be the 14th day of the month. Yeah. The because following day. it's going to be the following day which started at sunset. Mm -hmm. So what we're being told here in Leviticus and Jubilees and everywhere else is that the Passover sacrifice is actually supposed to take place after the day ends on the 13th or when the day begins on the 14th. But notice in verse two, how important this is. Matter of fact, would you read that? For on this night, the beginning of the festival and the beginning of the joy Ye were eating the Passover in Egypt when all the powers of Mastema had been let loose to slay all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh to the firstborn of the captive maidservant in the meal and to the cattle. So this happens on the first evening of Passover. That's when the joy actually begins. This time of joy actually starts 
on the evening of the fourth. And then you see down in verse three how this is a sign between us and our father. Mm -hmm. The mark of our father is Passover. We talked about that in our last video. So let's come over to the book of Jasher in chapter 83. And let's scroll down to verse 15. This is talking about the same story that we hear about in Genesis. Um, this is also written by Moses, but it's just more detail in this book of Jasher or Yasher. But go ahead and read verse 15. And it was after this, in the 13th day of the month, that Moses commanded the children of Israel to observe the Passover. So here on the 13th day of the month, they are actually receiving the commandment. Right. And our father didn't give these people a lot of lead time. You know, it wasn't a whole lot of planning and scheduling. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, when the command came down, they actually did it. Yeah. So what happens is it's during the daylight hours on the 13th day of the month is when they got the command. Mm -hmm. But they got the command to actually do the Passover during the twilight hours. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine they spent the rest of the day on the 13th preparing for dispatching and slaughtering and dressing this animal yeah because you know the passover is a time like you said there wasn't a lot of leeway it's sort of like a harried festival yeah yeah and so right at twilight which lasts what a half an hour hour at the most we would have slaughtered this animal dressed it put the blood on the doorpost went through all of the rest of the communion celebrations before they got ready to exit and leave Egypt. So mm -hmm. like you said, it was a very hurried deal. Mm -hmm. But notice back in the book of Jubilees, chapter 49, verse one, it's saying that they kill it at the beginning of the 14th day, but then they don't eat it until the evening of the 15th day. Right. Mm -hmm. That's because it takes eight hours to cook a whole lamb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to take it off the bone, and which means that you have to roast it whole. Yeah. And you can't boil it or anything. Right. You have to roast it over the fire, which means it's going to be a very slow cook. Yeah, it is a very slow cook. So you're talking between six and eight hours. And this will prove to anybody who is still yet not convinced, once they actually start slaughtering these Passovers, they're going to realize that if they slaughter it, in the twilight hours on the 14th day of the month and cook it for eight hours. That means that it probably won't be ready to eat until two or three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. But we see now that's not the case. The way it happens is they dispatch the animal on the fourth at twilight in the evening. A lot of people will marinate it overnight. And then during the daylight hours is when they actually started cooking the lamb. Right. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let's just look at a few more verses here. We'll stay in the book of Jasher. But I want to look at chapter 80 down at about verse 41. If you would read that. And the days of darkness passed away. And the Lord sent Moses and Aaron to the children of Israel saying, Celebrate your feast and make your Passover. For behold, I come in the midst of the night amongst all the Egyptians, and I will smite all their firstborn, from the firstborn of a man to the firstborn of a beast. And when I see your Passover, I will pass over you. So what this is saying is that the blood will be put on the doorpost on this evening here. And then in the middle of the night is when Mestima, the death angel, comes through. And so by the time they reach daylight hours on the 5th, the next day or the, the, the 14th day during the daylight hours, the Passover has already taken place. Right. You know, um, and Coach, you can tell me if this is true or not, um, how you were saying that they would have not been up all night cooking the lamb. Because, you know, a lot of this time, this cooking was done outside. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm not mistaken, they were told to shut themselves in, mm -hmm. that they're not supposed to be out, I guess, doing, I guess, chores or whatever, because um, the mistima was passing through. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And so that's a good point. And the thing about it, for those who don't understand how the day begins at sunset, they will be trying to get all of this done on the evening of the 5th mm -hmm. 
Mm. And so they will actually be cooking through the night on the Sabbath day. They'll have to wake everybody up in the middle of the night, two or three o'clock in the morning to hurry up and eat this lamb mm -hmm. before the sun rises because they didn't have to burn it up. Right. That's, but that's not how it works. You actually kill it here, cook it here, and then eat it on this evening. Right. Right. And then enjoy your Sabbath day on this day. Right. But we're not finished yet. Let's come back and look at Jasher. This time looking at verse 43. And it came to pass in the middle of the night that the Lord went forth in the midst of Egypt and smote all the firstborn of the Egyptians from the firstborn of the man to the firstborn of beasts. So this middle of the night would have been after the fourth and before the daylight hours of the fifth. Right. All right, let's drop down to verse 60. And the children of Israel delayed going forth at night and when the Egyptians came to them to bring them out, they said to them, Are we thieves that we should go forth at night? So they're not leaving after the Passover. Right. They've killed the Passover and are getting ready to prepare this Passover, but they're not ready to leave Egypt yet. Right. So in other words, they're going to wait to the daylight hours in order to leave Egypt. Right. Because the Passover again has already taken place. Mm -hmm. Now let's drop down to chapter 81. And let's look at verse 5. And the children of Israel traveled from Egypt, from Goshen, and from Ramesses, and encamped in Succoth on the 15th day of the first month. So they traveled during the Passover day. That's a preparation day. And so they did all of that walking out of Goshen in Egypt mm -hmm. on the 5th. And they made camp on the evening of the 5th, which would have been for us the evening of the 14th. Okay. So they would have sat there and ate their Passover meal there at Succoth on the evening of the 5th or the evening of the 14th. I just wanted to use the chronology of events from Moses to show the pattern of how Passover works. So now let's go in and let's look in the New Testament and see what the Messiah was doing on these days. Okay. All right, let's come to Mark chapter 14 and let's see what the Messiah and the disciples was doing on the 13th day of the first month. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, the disciples came to the Messiah. What do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover meal? So this is a little bit confusing because it's saying the first day of unleavened bread there when it just should have said the first day of Passover. Right. Not sure if that wasn't intentional or not. But what we're reading here is that they're on the 13th day of the month wondering where it was that they were going to actually prepare this Passover. Right. Now you can imagine it's not dark. They're mm -hmm. not talking about finding a place and preparing a place and finding an animal and dispatching an animal and all of this in the dark. Mm -hmm. They're actually on the 13th day in the light hours getting ready to start the Passover sacrifice. Yeah. You see down here in verse 16 that they left and came to the city, found everything that the Messiah was talking about, and then they actually started preparing the Passover. Then we can come to Matthew chapter 26 which the disciples are also talking about this Passover there in verse one. You see, I'm saying pretty much the same thing we saw in Mark down in about verse 17, first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and they're getting ready to prepare the Passover. We see in verse 19, 18 that they did it, they was instructed. But the reason why I'm bringing you over here to Mark 26 was to show you that immediately after they had prepared the Passover, up there in about verse 18 and 19, we see down in about verse 26 that they had the Last Supper, right. the Communion Supper. Mm -hmm. This was the Communion Festival. Mm -hmm. You see in 31, they're talking about tonight, you will all fall away because of me. Yeah, letting us know that this took place in the evening time. This would have taken place at the beginning or the evening hours of the 14th. Right. And then we can see down in about verse 47 that they arrested him. Yes. And then we know the rest of the story, how during the daylight hours of the 14th, it's when they put him on trial and they crucified him. Right. All of that went down during the daylight hours of the 14th. But the Passover had already taken place the evening before. Mm -hmm. This we have to understand people trying to figure out how the Messiah spent three days and three nights in the tomb. Well, if you start from the 14th, then it makes sense. That would have been your first night 
So that's one, two, three nights. Mm -hmm. And then since he rose on the 16th, that's one, two, three days. Right. But anyway, that's just an aside note. All right, now let's go to the gospel according to John in chapter 18. And let's look down in about verse 28. The Jewish leaders led the Messiah from Caiaphas to the Roman governor's palace. It was early in the morning so that they could eat the Passover. The Jewish leaders wouldn't enter the palace. Entering the palace would have made them ritually impure. So here it is on the day that they have the Messiah on the cross. Mm -hmm. and But they don't want to enter the judgment chamber because that's somehow going to make them unclean. Mm -hmm. And then they won't be able to eat the Passover that evening. Right. So it's clear here that the sacrifice has taken place the day before. But at the time that they got the Messiah on the cross, they haven't eaten right. the meal yet. They mm -hmm. haven't eaten the sacrifice. Right. So let's drop down to verse 39. After Pilate said this, he returned to the Jewish leaders and said, I find no grounds for any charge against him. You have a custom that I release one prisoner for you at Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? So here's adding to the confusion because at first we was talking about unleavened bread, but now we're back talking about Passover. Right. So it's a little more than odd that they used unleavened bread right. when they should have said Passover and they said Passover when they should have said mm -hmm. unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. But that's what it's talking about here. Mm -hmm. They're on the 14th day of the month during the trial and they're talking about releasing him, saying that they have a custom for them to release one of their prisoners before the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there's some reason they're using them backwards. Yeah, interchangeably. Yeah. I think that's what the Bible is talking about when it says that those who lead others into captivity will mm. go into captivity. Right. So the people who spent all of this time tried to add this confusion into our scripture are now the ones who are confused by it. Right. While the rest of us are figuring it out, mm -hmm. they're going to be the most stubborn and stick to mm -hmm. the lies that they themselves have created. Mm -hmm. But we'll talk about that in another video too. Now we're going to go over to John chapter 19. And we're going to look down in about verse 14. It was about noon on the preparation day for the Passover. Pilate said to the Jewish leaders, Here's your king. So we're noon on the preparation day. Right. And he's talking about here's your king. Mm. Who is the king? The Messiah. So he has the Messiah on the cross. Right. During the preparation day. Mm. So that means that the 14th is the preparation day. That's the day when they're preparing the lambs. Mm -hmm. You kill the lambs at the beginning of the 14th or the end of the 13th. Mm -hmm. And you prepare them during the daylight hours on the 14th. Mm hmm so that you could have the supper at the beginning of the Sabbath day, the high holy Sabbath day of unleavened bread. Right. So there you have it. I believe all of the proof that we need in order to understand how this works. We will go through the communion right after sunset on April the 4th. You know, whether you're having a lamb, if you're having a lamb, that's when you'll dispatch the lamb. Mm -hmm. If you're not having a lamb and you're just doing the bread and the wine, that's when you'll have that communion festival as well. Mm -hmm. On the evening, twilight hours of April the 4th, mm -hmm. as you get prepared for the Passover, which will happen sometime that night, mm -hmm. spiritually, of course. Right. And then when we wake up on the 5th, during the daylight hours, is when we actually start preparing for the Sabbath day. Yes. Again, if we have... The whole lamb, we will have to roast it for about eight hours on that day. Or we could be preparing our other Sabbath day festivities, our other Passover festivities, like getting the leavening out of the house or mm -hmm. getting the necessary scripture or other things we need as we get prepared for the Sabbath day, which starts on the evening of April the 5th and goes until the evening of April the 6th. Right. So I hope this answered all of the questions. I mean, I really... Tried to make sure I got all of the questions answered here. Well, it seems as if like the father um, purposely left us a trail starting from back there to Le in Leviticus all the way up until the Messiah sat down um, to have communion, you know, until it was finished at the grave site. Uh, there was a trail left for us to do it exactly the way that we were supposed to. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. Set up from the beginning, mm -hmm. this was going to be the way it was going to go down. The Messiah right. was going to come on the scene. He was going to change all of the sin offerings and sacrifices into his blood and into his wine so that we would all be standing here doing a sabbatical year in the year 2023, getting ready for this festival. And like you say, he scattered it out, I believe, so that we could figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, they couldn't get rid of one verse or one chapter and confuse everything. We got other verses and right. other chapters we can go to, even other books like Jasher and Jubilees and pull out facts and truths so that we can figure out exactly what we are supposed to be doing. Again, comparing it to what Moses did and what the Messiah did mm -hmm. so that we can be sure that we have it all right. Right. The communion is first. That's right. the first thing when it all starts. On the evening of the 14th is the communion. Then we prepare and then we rest. So everybody should be getting their wine and bread ready? Absolutely. Um, we can post up your recipe for unleavened bread and they can get the wine or those who are just doing scripture and prayer. They would also be prepared to have their festival mm -hmm. on the 4th. Right. Big day is April the 4th as we get prepared for April the 6th. In the meantime, check out some of these other videos that we've done on Passover and Unleavened Bread. Mm -hmm. Make sure you subscribe and hit that like button and leave us a comment below. And we'll see you down there. Shalawama. Shalawama.